So welcome everyone to the Python and Oracle Database Office Hours, May 2019. A standard safe harbor statement always is important in the open source world where <laughs> schedules are very subject to change and users make submissions and uh, uh, all sorts of things could happen in terms of our timing. So I can see people have already found the chat, which is good. I'll get to that in a minute. Just about us. So. Anthony Tuninga is online. He's the key person here that everybody wants to know, creator and maintainer of the CRX Oracle driver and uh, does a bulk of work with a lot of the other data infrastructure here for scripting languages. Uh, myself, a kind of product manager, so I do all of the uh, you know, conference organization, the paperwork behind the scenes, documentation, generally jollying along people. And Blaine Carter, who I'm not sure that he's on today, is our evangelist in this space. So we have a fairly brief program, try and keep you lean and keen. And uh, first thing I guess is for those people who haven't found it, there is a chat button that you can chat and ask us questions and I get around to the, the questions you've been asked earlier. And talk, we can talk as well. We'll throw the uh, session over to you a little bit later. But um, we have a couple of things to cover off first before I get to that question and any other questions you pose. And the first one I guess is Instant Client. So if you haven't seen it, the Instant Client 19.3 release for Linux is out. Uh, key thing not mentioned on the slide is that this is for Oracle Linux 7 onwards, so it won't work on Oracle Linux 6. Um, we have uh, RPM change there, which is worth noting as well, that to make it a lot easier for things like Docker, for automatic installs of those RPMs, the library search path is automatically configured when you install the basic or the basic light packages. I think a lot of people are familiar with, with Instant Client nowadays. Those are the base packages which provide the libclient shared library, which is used by CX Oracle and a number of the other drivers. Um, no changes for the zips there. I have a blog post out, which you'll see, and you can look at the downloads later and uh, get that link, follow my links. Now, simple Oracle document access, there's been a, a status change, I guess, on that. So that is something I'm not gonna cover, this is just one slide on the status. That's a document style, no SQL style API access for Oracle data, which is really, really interesting. So a number of our drivers, languages have access for that. Python, Node, Oracle DB, Java, PLSQL, REST APIs. It's a major paradigm shift. We had it marked as pre-release when you were using 18.3 Instant Client or Oracle Client libraries. Um, we have had some bug fixes going to those Oracle Client libraries in the 18.5 and 19.3 releases. So we're going to mark that API as ready for production use. Obviously, this is an open source space, so we still don't have, you know, telephone support for CX Oracle. You come through us on the GitHub issues. Anthony has been busy working on this upcoming release, CX Oracle 7.2. Code is out there on GitHub for anybody who wants to compile. And there's also been a new addition in there for Soda, the bulk insert operations, which make inserts a lot faster, which is kind of cool. Max from the soda team opened a tracking issue just to list a couple of the known issues this is obviously a dynamic space um, rapid development so if you want to track issue 309 then you can see what uh, current things you might want to be aware of when using soda but yeah go ahead and start using it with 18.5 and 19.3 clients and database 18.3 technically cx oracle won't stop you for using an earlier client an 18.3 client but uh, you really don't want to be using that in production Okay, so I've got three quick slides on what was our icebreaker theme before we head over to you and your questions. And let me go straight into those. Anthony will give a demonstration at the end, right, Anthony? Yep. Okay, so the first thing is that there is a changed API for Oracle Advanced Queuing. So Oracle Advanced Queuing, message passing, uh, been around in Oracle database for a long time very sophisticated functionality in terms of message behaviors, queuing behaviors, transforms. Um, the 
new API has some additions. We can now support what they call raw queues, which lets you pass messages as bytes or strings. And there's also a new bulk API. You can see at the bottom in red, the on queue many, DQ many, so you can pass multiple messages and get multiple messages at a time. Again, very efficient when you're dealing with large message numbers. Um, the bottom link there is the link to the Oracle, CX Oracle documentation on how to install from GitHub if you want to start playing with this or if you want to start looking at that earlier Soda Bok insert that I, I mentioned. Soda uh, isn't uh, related to this advanced queuing. So what do you do with advanced queuing? You need to actually create a queue and the queue you create in the database before you start running your Python application. Here, I am creating two queues. One, as you can see in the top right there, is the raw queue. So that's the one where we can pass bytes and strings. And the other is some mythical predefined user-defined type called book. And that's a, a standard type we're using in some of the CX Oracle examples. So you can find that the SQL to create, create something like this in the GitHub repository sample directory. Two queues created, tables created to store data about those queues. We've actually started the queues ready for on queuing and dequeuing. So this is the, the new onQ1 behavior. And the new methods for accessing queues, you create this queue object off the connection there at the top. So you name the queue, that's the demo raw queue, which has been created in the PLSQL code I showed slide before. You create a queue, and when you get a queue, it has a couple of objects you can access off that, the on queue options and the DQ options. So queues can be both on queuing, used for on queuing, dequeuing in the same process. You know, typically not many people do that because there are faster ways to communicate within a process, but certainly for demonstrations, it's kind of convenient to do that. But you can decide then at runtime whether you're going to on queue or dequeue into that queue. The number of options there, the on queue immediate interest, this is the, the visibility. It's effectively saying, do I need to commit explicitly or is the message going to be committed in its own transaction automatically? And here it's immediate. So it's not going to wait for the parent process. There's this Python script you're looking at to do an explicit commit. The message is going to be available to anyone. And similarly, for the DQ, it's going to be DQ'd immediately and taken out of the queue, not visible to anyone else. DQ no wait, it's relatively obvious. We're just going to skip if there's no nothing in the queue already. Nobody sent us a message. Number of options there, check the documentation for that. The payload is put into a message properties. So as well as those on queue options, we have message properties. We had a little bit of discussion about this, about whether to flatten that data structure, just make everything a message property, everything a, an on queue property. In the end, we went with a sort of standard Oracle terminology just to make everything consistent across the board. So there's some options there for message properties, such as say the expiration of a message. And you know, an expiration would be that the message stays in the queue for a certain number of seconds, and if nobody's dequeued it, then it would disappear. Here I'm just passing the payload, which is just this text string that I want to send. And then DQ, we've already seen ahead, I'm getting a byte string back, and I just need to do a decode to get that back as a, a string. So, you know, a few lines of code, and you've got some sophisticated functionality available to you. Object on queue we've had for a while. This is a new API to it where we do the queue, get, get the queue directly from the connection, so then we have these uh, options available. Um, here in this case, I've sort of given the, actually, I think that's a default navigation option, the DQ first message, but that's a kind of a sample. You can say which message you want if you're going, not going to DQ things off, the, if you're not going to commit things off the queue, leave them in the queue, you might want to navigate your way down the queue and get next message, etc. cetera. Um, we need to do a, a books type. I haven't really, oh, yes, this is the top, the get type, get the UDT book. So that makes a books type, which is a Python uh, structure, I guess, representing the Oracle database user-defined type. And then when we on queue, we can just set properties on that book, fellowship, Tolkien, set the, the price, and we can again dequeue the payload. In this case, it's just the object. Commit, because I didn't have that visibility set, so I need to do the explicit commit if that's what I want, if I want everybody else to see it. Similarly, for dequeue, I need to commit so that it's taken out of the queue. And here, I'm just printing out the title. Magic. Hmm. And then the final slide before going into the demo, going over to Anthony into the demo, is just bulk on queue DQ. So you are effectively here just passing an array of messages, the same as you would have messages in the single um, on queue example and DQ examples. Um, so you can 
set all properties of messages differently if you like, and just on queue with one on queue call among the on queue many, your array of messages again committing. Oh, I see I've uh, left the commit in, but I got the on queue immediate. That's a, a slide error. Um, and DQ in this case has the DQ many has a an extra parameter, which is a maximum number of messages. So there's effectively you know, the buffer space for allocating how many messages at a time are we prepared to cope with. In this case, five. So we might get zero or five. If there's nothing in the queue and we said no wait as we've had here, we might get zero back, or we're going to get at most five messages back. And again, we have to decode those messages if if we're passing uh, strings. If we know we're passing strings, so there's going to be string uh, string data coming back. So with that small type about the unnecessary commit there, let me throw it over to Anthony. I'll stop sharing and he can give you a bit of a demo of this in practice. All righty. <clears throat> All right, so I will first talk about the producer. Um, I created um, two separate uh, scripts because in general, when you're doing AQ, you're gonna have separate um, parts of the application that will be doing this. It generally isn't done in one. So in this case, I have a producer that is going to create a random message number. And then this is the message that's going to be sent here. The, uh, I just put some random data in there, the interval I'm going to wait, and then the message number. And then I print it out. Then what I'm going to do is acquire a connection from the pool, create the queue, create the message properties that I'm going to send through and queue it commit, close, and then I'm gonna wait a certain amount of time before going ahead and doing it again. And that'll just keep going over and over again. So it looks like this. So here's the message of the interval, and there's a message number, and so forth. And that will keep going. And while I'm doing that, I'll show you the consumer side, which is very simple as well. Again, just create a connection to the database, create your queue, and then DQ many up to max messages. Um, in this case, it'll be good for the when it catches up, but after it's caught up, it's only gonna be do, um, DQing one message at a time, so we could have just used DQ1. The other thing here is I'm de um, using Marshall to, in the producer case, to dump it into a byte string, and then here I am decoding it again. So first it catches up, and then now you'll see that they, when one gets produced over here, it immediately comes over here as well. Magic. Yeah, magic. Very cool. And certainly that uh, array option, the AQ team has been on at us to try and implement that to get the performance up there for major users. Yep. So that's it for Great. the demo. Yep. Let me steal a screen back from you. And yep. if I can find my Zoom controls, which are on one of, one of my windows, I'll share mine again. And to do share, and look, by the magic of PowerPoint, those extra commits have disappeared on that slide. I might do that as the next. So now it is over to you. I saw there's a little bit of chat on the chat window. I will put up the uh, resources for the, anybody who does want to drop off. Um, and the chat has got sessions. Okay, so we have these relatively short, short sessions infrequently. So there are a number of videos up there on that Ask Tom page. The page that you logged in at down the bottom should have the recordings. And you can access help through us or any of those links there on the slide that you're looking at. Now, we're open to any questions. If you've got questions about direction, um, problems you've got, things you want us to do, things you want us to talk about, please start typing while I'm talking. Um, one thing I didn't mention is the release time frame of that CX Oracle 7.2. Source code is out there in its current state, uh, you know, which basically means not fully regressed and we don't have binaries built for it yet. Uh, that will be ongoing. May put in more features and, and tidy up some loose open enhancement requests. 
Um, but I don't know, Anthony, we're talking about sometime in the next 12 months or something like that. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Better be in less than 12 months. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it'll be uh, relatively soon. So, you know, uh, maybe I'm going to be uh, pessimistic and say a couple of months, but hopefully a little bit closer than that. So questions, anyone? And what would you like to see next session, next month? We'll probably slip the time at least by one hour next month, just so I don't have to get up at 6 a.m. in the morning, as, which uh, not being a morning person is not so good for me. Uh, but uh, you know, just let us know if you really do want to, to swap in a major time zone. Oh, there we go. There's a question. In Python 3, it's async. Um, the, the async IO um, module is not currently supported. Uh, you can use Python threads. That would work just fine. I don't have a particular demo at the moment that does so. But yes, it can be done. So it's probably a good point for us to point out that this is an open source project and people can make contributions. So if you start playing around with something like that, we'd love to see it back into GitHub to share with other people. So let us know when you've done it. Fantastic. Okay, so another point there on on uh, Zoom is that there's going to be a Python developer event in Sao Paulo. I might Cities I've seen a couple of times, had the pleasure of being there and enjoying Brazilian hospitality a couple of times. I do actually miss it, to be honest. Um, 9 a.m., 90 people are ready. Uh, so it's at the Oracle office. And let me just, I'm going to do a bit of magic slide way here. Yeah. And see if I can, if I can edit my slides right now. Just stare at my blank screen for a minute. And I'm going to put a new slide in and why can I not paste the content of that? So Luciano, how do people contact you if, is it on, is all the details are on the uh, meetup page I imagine? There we go. So go to that meetup group and get some great Python developer content. That's excellent, excellent idea. I will tweet that as well. Okay, if there are no more questions and answers, we will just formally wrap up the session and let you informally contact us at your leisure, privately or publicly, as you wish.